Thank you, Abhi. Good evening, everyone. I am your table topics master today, and the questions that I've prepared are aligned with the positive mindset theme of the meeting. So my first question to you, and I'll wait for one of you to volunteer. So, so I think, Avi, please correct me. Do I first choose a volunteer and then ask the question or the question and then a volunteer? Maybe you can ask the question and see who volunteers. If you don't find anybody, then you can call. Okay, great. Okay, the first question is, give us an example of a situation that you approach with a positive mindset, but you assertively communicated no or rejected an opportunity that did not align with your goals. Who wants to take this question? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't see your name, but you know, on, on the screen it says immediate past district. Kathy. Kathy. Thank Hello, you, Kathy. Everybody. Thank you for that powerful question. I remember a time when I was at MD Anderson and a young lady was positive that she was not going to move from point A to point B but I had to, it was my job to make her do that. It's very, very difficult. She was very grumpy. We didn't see any positives in this. And I will tell you the reason she was so upset was because she was a nurse and not just any nurse. She was the nurse that told you you were going to die. I moved her from a office with the door into a common area with eight other women that had to take the horrible news to a new patient that said, you have cancer stage four, call your family. She was livid. Oh my gosh, how are we supposed to do this? I didn't really have an answer, not for her, not for that day. But I heard her and I took their need to the president of MD Anderson and said, this is crazy. Do you realize what you've done to our patients and how you're impacting their lives? He didn't understand what was happening during a construction project. He had not anticipated that the patients hearing those awful words of you have cancer would now be in a room where they had to take that hit without any recourse or any ability to have a Kleenex, a kind hand or a friend. Ladies and gentlemen, it was not an easy move by any stretch of the imagination, but by listening to my customer, the young lady, presenting it then to the president, things changed in three months. It was a tough three months, but if you see something, speak up. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Kathy. That's so wonderfully explained. Uh, and it's pretty much uh, like the Stop the Line initiative that we do in healthcare. Thank you. And next question to the group. Please share top five things you do to build positive relationships at workplace or community. A tactical question, who wants to take this? I'm sorry, did I see a hand raise? I'll repeat the question. Please share top five things you do to build positive relationships at workplace or community. Okay, I see Lewis. Go for it. Wow, wow, wow. I love that question. I think the best thing I ever done for someone 
And so I'll make them understand that I'm their benefit. I'm their friend. A lot of times we have tasks that I find remedial. And we get so consumed and the pain accomplishing this task all the time that we spend because we, we do not see the benefit all clear. There's days I had to deal with individuals that well seasoned professionals. Instead of telling them, I work with them. Instead of asking for mandate, I ask for information. I let them educate me. Finally, I put my hands down and get on my hands and knees and help them. That one individual, his wife was suffering cancer. He cut all his hair and I asked him, hey, what happened? And he says, Louis, I need to talk to you. We went into the office. He explained to me, I cut my hair because I did not want my wife to be alone. And we cried over each other's shoulder. Now, we don't work on the task that's remedial. We work on a positive, long-lasting relationship. Back to you, Mr. Table Topics. Thank you very much, Louis. That's powerful. I'm hearing that listening is a key skill to maintain positive attitude. Okay, next question to the group. Would you rather be a leader with a positive mindset or a leader with a realistic mindset and why? Who wants to take this? I'll take it. Go for it, Kim. Thank you. Yes. Um, as much as I admire people that are positive, sometimes I believe that they can be a level of toxic positivity. So I think we have to be careful with preaching positivity as long as we're realistic. So if I were to pick the two, I would pick a uh, realistic because it's good to look at reality and what's going on. You can spin it into a way that doesn't necessarily, necessarily go in a negative light, but there's nothing better than looking at reality and facing it the way it is. So I will definitely take um, realistic leadership versus positive. And I'm not saying that uh, the elements of positivity are not um, important, they are, but uh, it's important to be realistic as well. Thank, thank you, Table Topic Master, that's it from me. Thank you very much, Kim, for that intelligent perspective. Next question to the group. Please tell us about an experience that required you to inspire a group of stakeholders to look at things with a positive mindset. Any takers? Go for it, Akeem. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. At work, in the community, or at home, there are opportunities out there to instill some positivity into a group of people. We just need to open our eyes and our minds to those possibilities, to those opportunities. And I'll give you a real life example. In my career at different times, there were opportunities for people to be let go. And those opportunities were taken by the business. At, at other times, letting people go, I saw that as risks. And those risks were taken by the business. My point tonight is a time when people were let go. Those who remained, they kept asking me, 
when are you guys going to let me go? I told them what I'm going to tell you tonight. You are still here today. Yesterday was gone. Today, you've got tomorrow was never promised by anybody. Take advantage of it. And here was my message that really spurred them on. See your today as where you are planted and choose to flourish. We all have that opportunities in our life. We complain, we are angry. Instead of us focusing on our now and choosing to flourish because we are planted there today. Here's my call to you all. Go into the world, wherever it is that you find yourself and choose today not to complain, not to be bitter, irrespective of the situation, but instead, choose to flourish. Thank you very much. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Akin. Uh, I really like that choose today. It's, it's very empowering to me. It sounds very empowering. Thank you. The next question to the group, what are the three things you do consistently in your day-to-day -day routine to maintain a state of positive mindset? I repeat, what are the three things you do to do consistently in your day-to-day -day routine to maintain a state of positive mindset? Any volunteers? I'll take it. Go for it, John. Thank you. Thank you, um, Table Talk Master. Um, the three things that I do daily to be positive. The first thing is um, smile. So when I wake up, the, when I, every day, when I wake up the everyday morning, when I dress up, when I finally comb my hair, get ready for work, I smile it and look at the mirror and smile. Say that you can do it. That's, that's the first thing I do every day uh, to stay positive. And the second thing I do in every day Try to help someone every day, somewhere, somewhere in the point, maybe in the restaurant, maybe at workplace, maybe at a, in an elevator, maybe at the lift. You know, you get an opportunity to get, um, to give help at least one person a day. And, and let me think, then the third thing I do in every day, at the end of the day when I come home, um, a review, I review things. What did I do today? What are the things I've, what are the mistakes and what are the bad things I did today? And pray for the day. Uh, you know, that pray is actually, uh, pray for the things happening on that to be safe. You know, when I was driving, when I was a lot of opportunities, I, you know, it can go wrong, but God helped me to stay on track. That's the third thing I do um, every day to be positive. Thank you. I'm table table masters. Thank you very much, John. That's that's really nice. Smile, help someone, and then reflect on your day. Helps you maintain a state of positive mindset. Thank you. The next question to the group. Just imagine I'm sounding like a pessimistic person today. Please try to influence me to practice positive mindset in approximately less than two minutes. Any takers? Please try to influence me to practice positive mindset in approximately less than two minutes. I'll give it five seconds and after that, I'll call out. Okay, go for it, Kathy. Okay. I'm going for it because I believe in what you just asked us to do. Whenever you have the doldrums and you feel like you just can't move forward and 
everything is just dragging out of you. Having someone walk in and just smile, be there and give you an inspirational word, a moment when you can feel confident all of a sudden that you can literally change the world if you need to. Today, we were talking to Luis and Akeem because they're going to be area directors next year. Because we've got your wonderful president who is going to be a division director next year. Look around you at the leaders in your club. Count them one by one and recognize that you're surrounded by positivity. Now, do you want to be the person that people run away from or that they follow? Whenever you look around you, look behind you, see who's there. If nobody's following you, then what are you doing? What is your purpose? How are you impacting the world in a better way? Silly things, but I want it to say on my tombstone, nothing extraordinary except that she tried really hard. I know I'm not all that, but I know that I will give it everything I've got for as long as there is breath in my body. I want others to succeed with everything in me. I want to encourage you to have the joy, the excitement, and the fun of watching someone who is shy or introverted or lacking confidence to come out of their shell and go, I can do this. Kathy believes in me. And then you begin to believe in yourself. Thank you for the opportunity to share that. Thank you, Kathy. I'm following you right now. I mean, uh, timer, do we have time for more questions or how would you like for me to proceed? No more, please. Okay, great. Who wants to take the next one? What activities, tasks did you do today or in this week with a positive mindset? Maybe I volunteer Yolanda. I volunteer Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. Um, hi. I, I apologize. I was I was distracted by shenanigans in the background. Can you re please repeat? Sure. What activities or tasks did you do today or in this week with a positive mindset that required a positive mindset? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Most of those that know me know that I have a sibling attitude. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that right. I saw it at the beginning of the meeting. It's now gone. I did that from memory. They know that I'm a positive person to begin with. I would say that 99.9% .9 of the things that I do on a daily basis tend to be positive. I grew up in an environment where a good chunk of it because of the dynamics were negative. I used to always wish my mom worked hard so she would come home with a pretty short attitude and a short disposition because she was so tired. Therefore, I used to always say, mom, I'll give you a hug. And she'd always say, go, go now, I'm, I'm tired. As beautiful as her heart was, I used to always say to myself, man, I think a smile would change everything. I think that receiving my hug would change everything. I think that looking at it not as, man, I'm tired and I'm drained and things are so crazy around me, I think reflecting on the the things that you can be grateful for. I have a job even though I have to work hard for it. These beautiful babies that I brought into the world, now I can raise them, train them up and love on them to share it with other individuals. I'm gonna smile because it could always be worse. Madam Table Topics Master, my disposition and my outlook is 
if you're positive, you will always get positive things that come back to you. I practice that and much everything that I do is positive. Back over to you. Thank you very much, Yolanda. I'm gonna get you again, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> Great. Uh, the next question to the group, do happiness and positive mindset mean the same? Yes or no? Yes and no, please elaborate. Who wants to take this? Do happiness and positive mindset mean the same? Yes or no? Please elaborate. It looks like this lot will have to fall on Jessica. Jessica, can I volunteer you? Sorry, I'm in the volunteering tonight. My apologies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was thinking about this. And um, to me, I think they mean the same. Um, positive. I'm a positive person and always try to um, think things from a bright side, even though I know uh, something may happen in all, always as the, the path I want to, but I learn from my mom and the past experience that always Pre, uh, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. So I'm positive, but I'm not over positive because I know I need to be prepared for the worst to happen. And when I have that, I'm prepared for anything that could happen. And then if bad thing happens, I don't feel sad because I'm prepared. And if good thing happens, of course, I will be really, really happy. So I think for that, uh, that means the same to me. Thank you. Back to you. Madam Toastmaster, uh, sorry, Madam um, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Jessica. I agree with you. Positive mindset leads to happiness. So, Madam Timer, would you please let us know who qualified for the table topics? Yeah, so all speakers qualified. It seems, Kim, you had five more seconds until you qualified, but everyone did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> 